We're gonna cover the key concepts behind a healthy bulk and we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dan Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in being an athletic freak, you wanna learn how to get stronger, you wanna learn how to run faster, you wanna learn how to be more explosive, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So over the years, we've been asked this question a lot. Dane, how can I bulk properly? How can I have a healthy bulk? And this is an area where I am very, very well versed in. This is something that I pride myself on the success of being a dirty bulker. And so for much of my life, I was a shot putter. I was a heavier guy. I had been a football player in high school and a shot putter. And I, I did wrestle as well. I was a heavyweight wrestler. And so I was always a little bit heavy on the, on the fatter side, a little bit husky, if you would say. That's my mom always said, Dan, you're just husky. You're not actually fat. And so why was I so involved and so infatuated with that bulking lifestyle? And I think a lot of it has to do with, I was a shot putter. I was somebody who was working up a weight class in the sport of wrestling. I had been wrestling in my freshman year at 152 pounds, and then my sophomore year I had grown four and a half, five inches, and by my sophomore year I was the heavyweight. And so if we can think about bulkers as people who might be switching from a linebacker to a down lineman, or someone who might be moving up a weight class in a sport like Olympic weightlifting or a sport like wrestling, or maybe you're hard gainers. Maybe you're a hard gainer and, and you claim you can never gain weight properly. You can never bulk and you're just walking around as this string bean of just, you're all skin and bones and you need to get on that bulk. That's typically who we're talking about. But before we even go into any of this, we've got to recognize a couple key factors. We've got to comprehend that when we're bulking, we are going to gain a little bit of fat mass. We're going to be gaining a little bit of that sort of chunk that we want to talk about. We've also got to understand calories in and calories out, okay? So if we can think about TDEE, -E, okay? So total daily energy expenditure. And underneath TDEE, -E, we're going to have basal metabolic rate. We're going to have thermic effect of food. We're going to have non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and we're going to finish that off with exercise activity. So that's going to be the scale here of what we need to think about when we're talking about total daily expenditure. Okay. And then on this side, we're going to be talking about all of the calories that we're consuming. So we're going to be thinking about food, drinks, anything that involves caloric consumption is going to be on this side. So this will be our calories in, this will be our calories out. So this is going to be operating on a scale. And if we can now think about mass and energy, okay? So this is going to be the energy coming in, this is going to be the energy going out. The whole goal when we're talking about a bulk is to make sure that we are consuming more calories than we're actually burning. And this is a really, really important concept because when we're talking about hard gainers, a lot of hard gainers will say they're in a calorie surplus. They're in this caloric surplus and I still can't gain weight. And you're full of crap. You are not in a caloric surplus because if you were, you'd be gaining weight. Now, Right off the bat, if we're only in a 200 or 100 calorie caloric surplus, now we might be a little bit more adaptive. We've got to think about our human body. We've got to think about how well our body adapts to everything. We always want to stay in homeostasis. And if we think about it, BMR takes about 60% of our daily caloric expenditure. If we're eating 2000 calories and we think we're going to bulk by only eating 2050 calories, what happens is, our BMR actually adapts and we'll burn that extra 50 calories. So we need to make sure that if we're bulking, we're about 200 to 400 calories in a surplus. And we've got to recognize that we might even get upwards of 500 calories in a surplus with certain people. But the main point, if we're talking about bulkers, we're talking about the hard gainers, we're talking about throwers, 
shot putters, discus throwers, offensive linemen, people working up weight classes to bulk properly, we have to comprehend calories in and calories out because there is no lying. If you're in a caloric surplus, you will gain weight. Where do we start when we're talking about those four key factors behind the healthy bulk? Right off the bat, coming at that number four spot, we've got to think about approaching every aspect of calories in, calories out as a rep by rep approach. What does that mean? We need to track our intake. We need to take every little rep to make sure that we're doing it properly. So one, we have to track our macronutrients. We have to know where we're getting our food from. We have to know how many calories we're bringing in. If I'm burning 3000 calories a day and I believe that I'm bulking, I'm, I'm eating extra, I'm eating more than three calories a day, but I'm not tracking it and I might only be eating 2900 calories a day, I'm not gonna bulk. So we need to understand that if I wanna bulk right off the bat, I should be around three to 400 calorie sur surplus and that's going to help us in our healthy bulk. Now, when I say rep by rep, I also mean it has a little bit of a hidden meaning here. I also mean that when you're sitting down, approach that extra food that you're eating as though each bite that you're taking, each spoonful that you're putting in your mouth is a rep by rep process to gaining more muscle mass, to gaining that healthy bulk, to getting bigger. Make sure that you have that approach and you understand all those little factors that go into that healthy bulk. That third key concept is that we've got to remember back to what I mentioned about our basal metabolic rate. When we start to eat a little bit more, let's say we're normally eating 2000 calories and today we're gonna to eat 2050 or 2100 calories, our body adapts to that, okay? And it's no different if we're eating three or 400 or 500 extra calories on a normal day, we're gonna have a lot more energy in the weight room. We're gonna to start to feel really, really good. So that means we can actually increase our volume. Now, energy expenditure from exercise only takes up about 10% of our caloric usage, okay? It only takes up about 10% of our energy usage, right? So what ends up happening is we can see more energy being used in the weight room. That's why if we're only eating 50 to 100, 150 extra calories a day, we might not see an actual response in bulking because we're putting out more energy in the weight room. We're doing enough to change that energy output in the weight room, which can then impede on our bulk. So make sure that you're at 300 or 400 or even 500 extra calories throughout the day because you will be able to do more volume in the weight room. That's very, very important. Now, an aside, that doesn't mean going and just shoving food down your throat over and over and over again. Again, it goes back to track your intake and make sure that you're planning that out throughout the day so that you get that proper energy surplus so you can keep that bulk rolling. And that leads us into the number two key concept. And I like to use this rule as a healthy bulk. And the reason why I like to use this is because I bulked when I was younger with junk food, with Cheez-Its and Mountain Dew and just tons and tons of crap. And it made it a lot harder for me to lose that weight later on in life. And it took me about five or six years to finally get my body together and to get my mind together because I was so addicted to eating junk food. I love to eat Cheez-Its, I love Doritos, I love crap like that. And the reason why those foods help you bulk is because they taste really, really good and they don't make you satiated. So what I've learned is if we can sit there and we can approach bulking with this step-by-step -step process where you slowly increase 300, then you get to 400 caloric surplus and you're using whole foods and then you save about 10% of your calories for that junk food, it makes it a lot easier to lose that weight later on, but it also makes it a lot healthier. It makes you eat with your proper food choices and it also helps you recover more effectively because now you're gonna make sure that you're getting that high protein intake that you need to recover from your training and you're gonna be eating proper fats, proper carbs and that's gonna help you to continue developing 
that lean muscle mass that we want so that we can hit that healthy bulk. One other factor here is this goes back to tracking our intake and number three here with recognizing that extra energy is don't just shove food down your throat because what has happened to me in the past is I've got food allergies. I used to just shove peanuts down my mouth all day. I know that sounds pathetic. And what ended up happening is I was eating so many peanuts and so many nuts that my body was never actually finished digesting food. I was constantly scarfing down food while I was still digesting food. And that led to an allergy to peanuts that developed later on in life because I was eating so many peanuts and I wasn't taking a break from that. So make sure that you track your food properly and you keep that to 90% of your whole foods, but also specify those feeding points. Don't just eat food constantly throughout the day. Have a big breakfast, wait two or three hours, have a nice snack, wait an hour, have a big lunch, and you can break it up properly so that your digestive system can actually do the work it needs to do. Now, before we head into that number one key factor behind a healthy bulk, all of this stuff is really difficult. It's easy to just scarf down tons and tons of food. It's easy to avoid eating that whole foods and to track your macronutrients. So what we've done is we've created an entire custom nutrition program specifically to help you with your bulking, to help you build that lean muscle mass and to help you improve your strength. If you head over to garagestrength.com, you can pick up your custom nutrition program so that we can help you with your custom healthy bulk. Finally, that number one key factor is gonna be utilize compound movements. This is for all you hard gainers out there. You guys love to say, oh, I'm eating, I'm eating in this caloric surplus. And you're not, first of all. Second of all, then you show me your workout plan and you're doing bicep curls, you're doing leg curls, you're doing leg extensions. You're not utilizing compound movements. If you're doing a healthy bulk, you better utilize all that extra energy that you have in the weight room now and go in and hammer seven, eight, 10 sets of back squats. You better hammer some deadlifts during the week if you really want to gain some weight. You better hammer some of those power snatches, some of those power cleans, and start doing extra compound movements that you otherwise wouldn't do. When you're utilizing compound movements, now your body's gonna start creating different pathways for recovery. It's gonna start to pack on way more lean muscle mass, and you can still finish off your workout with those isolation exercises, but it's important to take advantage of that caloric surplus. Take this as an opportunity to add 50, 60, 70 pounds to your bench press, add those 80 pounds to your back squat, and now all of a sudden you're getting that healthy bulk, not only because you're eating those whole foods, but also because you're utilizing that energy, you're cultivating that energy in the weight room, and you're starting to hit monster PRs with those big, compound movements and ultimately there's a couple key factors here if you're doing compound movements that's going to help you the most for sports performance if you're doing compound movements that's going to help you the most for gaining lean muscle mass as well and that's going to transfer over to whatever sporting realm you might be in but even if you're just a bodybuilder and you're doing this for fun if you want to gain more lean muscle mass you've got to be hammering out those compound movements so if you want more information about nutrition, about cutting weight, about gaining weight, about getting stronger and utilizing nutrition as optimally as possible, head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up our custom built nutrition program specifically to your needs. If you want more information about nutrition, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.